morning, church. Good morning, everyone. You're very, very welcome in the house of the Lord. Let's just stand in the presence of God. And you're very welcome if you're joining us on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram. I'm just going to read from Revelations 4, verse 8. They worshiped without ceasing, day and night, singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, the was, the is, and the coming and whenever the living creatures gave glory honor and thanks to the one who is enthroned and who lives forever the 24 elders fell face down before the one seated on the throne and they worship the one who lives forever and ever and they surrendered their crowns before the throne singing you are worthy our Lord God to receive glory honor and power for you created all things and for your pleasure they were created and exist we just want to exalt the name of jesus in this place let's just lift up our hands and pray to jesus lord god you are faithful we worship you you are worthy of the praise you are still worthy of the praise even right now no matter what's going on you are a faithful god you keep your promises we're gonna press in press in to worship fight this battle this is the place where the battle is won as we worship you lord jesus we just glorify your name jesus we thank you because your promises are yes and amen and you said you would build this church and the gates of hell would not prevail against it the power of death would not prevail against it jesus your name is the name above every other name so we exalt your name in this place knowing that you are worthy of the praise amen
my confidence is your faithfulness. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. I will rest in your promises.
is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness to Great is your faithfulness to From the rising sun to the setting sun, I'm praising your rising sun.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, we are so grateful that you are our God. We thank you, Father. We praise you, Father, for what you are doing and what you have done in our lives. We give you praise. We give you praise. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, this day. Oh, for without you, we are nothing. We are nothing without you. We just want to thank the praise group, the worship group. What a lovely, lovely service we've had up to now. We've had wonderful worship. I know our praises have gone up before our God of sweet incense before Him. And I know He is very pleased. He's very pleased. So I just want to welcome everybody here today. You are so welcome, everyone. So welcome. And I just, you can sit down. We just want to see if there are any newcomers in the house tonight. Anyone for the first time that has come here to All Nations. If you would like to stand and tell us where you're from, that would be wonderful. Anyone new today? Where are you from? Botswana. Oh, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. Anyone else? Yes, where are you from? Nigeria, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. Glory, glory. Anyone else? The Czech Republic, is that what he said? Yeah, you're very welcome. Welcome. Anyone else? Yes? Brazil, you are very welcome. <laughs> Glory. Anyone else? Yes? Botswana, how? Oh, welcome. Welcome. Anyone else? I don't want to leave anybody out. Everybody? Zimbabwe. Woo! Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Well, you're all very welcome in the house today. And we thank God for each and every one of you that you are all going to receive from him today. He has got blessings, blessings, blessings that he wants to pour out on each and every one of you today. So we just thank the Lord. Now, before I go, go any further, there is a car, a black BMW 181D3561. If you could remove it, it's blocking the area wherever you're parked. Thank you. Okay. So the next thing I just want to sort of say, I mean, there, I'm sure everybody knows about our precious Jackie, our darling Jackie. She has been promoted to heaven. She is in glory at this point in time. But, you know, praise God. You know, Jackie, we believe maybe she's looking down at us here. She could be looking down through one of the portals in heaven. And what is she saying? She's saying, come on, run your race for the joy that is set before you. We have got joy glory unspeakable ahead of us so we have got to take our place we've got to go and move praise God with the spirit of the living God Jackie was a, a darling she will be missed but you know something she is going to be always in our hearts glory to God and she is there I believe she's one of the one of the cloud of witnesses that is egging us on and telling us come on come on take your place hurry up get this job done so that we can all be together again glory Glory, glory to God. Praise God. Glory. So I, I just want to give a message that, uh, you know, uh, Pastor John, Pastor John just gave a message for you all. He loves you, Pastor Joanna and Pastor John miss you so much. And they just sort of said they want to let you know that they love you. They so appreciate you and all of the prayers and everything that you, your support throughout the last season where they have come through hell and high waters. So, you know, we just, they just want to let you know that they will be back on Sunday and that he has got a special message for each and every one of us that he is longing to impart to all of us and you know as Romans 1 12 says I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong so you know praise God this is his heart this is Pastor Joanna's heart they want to let you know that they love you and that they miss you but praise God with the grace of God they will be here next week so we just want to honor them and we just want to thank them this morning praise God for being our pastors they 
They are so loyal. They're so faithful. They're such a giving couple that they have given, their, laid down their lives for each and every one of us. So we just want to honor them and give them praise. Just give them a, a clap a offering this morning. And thank God for each, for each of them today and their precious family. Glory, glory, glory to God. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Glory. Now, I just want to remind you just quickly, you know, of the protocol, you know, with this COVID that we want to stick, you know, to uh, the protocol that tells us, you know, if you're moving about, just keep your mask on. But you're okay if you're sitting down, you can remove it. All right? That's all I'm going to say about that. Praise God. And I'm just going to receive the offering you've got the health and safety notice up there okay so i'm going to receive the offering this morning and you know i'm just my heart is my heart is overflowing with thanksgiving and gratitude towards god because some of us have come through COVID, and it was through his power his glory his magnificent oh encouragement and grace that brought us through all of this so i you know i just want to thank god this morning i am here there was a song that came into my heart and it was mary's song and i just want to speak this to you this morning because god is here he wants to pour out his blessings he's here to meet Every single person here today, no matter what it is, he will meet that. He is the one that wants to satisfy you today. Not any man, not anyone else, but himself. He is your savior. He is your king. He is your Lord. He is everything to you. But he is a precious father. He looks after all of his children. And he wants you to come in to a new dimension of the new creation that you are. You are born of him. Bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. He wants you to know this, that you are his offspring and that you're here to bring glory and honor to his name. But this was the, this was the, the, the word I have been praising throughout the last three weeks for thanking, thanking God. There was nothing else I could do when he praise him and thank him because I knew he was bringing me through. I knew the power of God was in me to get me through. And this is what Mary said. And I'm reading from the Passion. My soul is ecstatic, overflowing with praises to God. My spirit bursts with joy over my life-giving God. He's a life giver. He has given us the abundant life as new creations. He wants us to live in that new life. He wants us to excel. He wants us to move in a deeper and greater relationship and intimacy with him so that he can do that work in all of us. But I just love that. And she said, because he has set his tender gaze upon me, his lowly servant girl. But glory to God, we are his lowly servant children. We serve him but we are precious. We are royalty. We are co-heirs and joint heirs with Christ. So he really wants to meet everything that's going on in your life today. And I just want to read one scripture, and it is from Philippines 4.19. Now, this is the passion, and you need to just meditate on this. There's a lot of scriptures you all know, and we all know, but, you know, it's meditation. It's getting the revelation of what's going on in your life. He has already imparted everything that you need for this life and godliness, as he said. So this is what it says. I am convinced that my God will fully satisfy every need you have. Are you convinced? Yes, amen. For I have seen the abundant riches of glory revealed to me through the anointed one. Haven't you received revelation that you are his child, that you are his offspring, that you have the kingdom of God inside of you, that you've got the riches and the wealth of God living inside of you. But it's up to us to draw from it, to draw with joy out of the well of salvation. Glory to God. And then it goes on to say, and God our Father will receive all the glory and the honor throughout eternity of eternities. We're here to bring glory to our Father God by 
possessing by laying hold of all of the inheritance that he has given us. Jesus is our inheritance. Everything that Jesus has and bought back for us is in us and it belongs to us. He wants us to start possessing our inheritance. When we possess Jesus, when we have our eyes on him, when we hold onto him, keeping our minds on him, hallelujah, he will keep us in that perfect peace. He is our shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. Now we're not there yet, but glory to God, he is excelling everything in us, his new life, the new creation, the love of God. It's the love of the Father. And once when we get this unveiled to us, we will have mountain moving faith. We will be moved by faith because we trust, trust, trust to know that he is a faithful, loving God. He is here today. He wants to meet where you're at. He wants to get into all your difficulties, all of your weaknesses, and all of your problems problems and challenges in life. He wants to get into those today. Do you believe? Are you going to give them over to him today? Because remember, first of all, you've got to remember, you've got to get connected. You've got to get connected. Now love, we all know what love is. It's giving, 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 giving. Because he has done all of that. He has given himself to each and every one of us. But now I just want you to get connected. To have faith in whatever you're going to release today. You know, tithes, of course, is your covenant connector. I mean, tithes is showing, showing our God that you love him. Remember, he loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. But you need to return that love. You need to lavish your love upon him today. And that is by showing your heart and saying, Yes, Lord, I am a tither. I will not rob you. I will give of my tithe, my, the tenth of my tithe, but I will also give my offerings. And you sow, sow into that area of your life. He wants, you can make out a list, whatever it is. I don't know because we have come through such a bad season. But now he wants you to make out a list. But when you do, you're going to do that in faith. You're going to make out that list with expectancy because you're not holding on to it anymore. You're giving it over. You're giving it over to the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to take hold of all of these challenges and troubles and weaknesses that you're going through right now. You sow your seed today. And remember that you are his new creation. You are a powerhouse down here on the earth. That he is going to manis, manifest himself through each and every one of us. And the last scripture, I will just say this. In Galatians six fifteen, Paul said this. Circumcision doesn't mean a thing or uncircumcision doesn't mean a thing. Gentiles, Jews, Greeks means nothing. But this is what he says, and this is from the Passion. The only thing that really matters is living by the transforming power of this wonderful new creation life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So with all of your heart, with your faith, so today, everything will be put back on the screen there where you need to give. Okay, but just give in faith, expecting, expecting your heavenly father, the one that loves you, want to, wants to pour out blessings on you today. So you can pass around the baskets. And I'm just going to, hallelujah, I'm just going to pray over this offering. Praise God. I just want to pray over this offering. And Father God, I just thank you that you are such a loving God. You are such a loving Father. That Father, we are so expectant today that Lord, that you are going to Lord God, meet everyone here where they're at. That you will solve their difficulties and their problems and their weaknesses. That you will pour out your shalom. Your shalom on each and every one. And Lord God, as they sow with their hearts today with faith, knowing that you are here, Father to meet every need physically, spiritually, mentally, socially, materially, and maritally. You are here to meet all of their needs, that they will release their faith 
trust in you knowing that you have you have them on them on your mind father thank you lord god praise you we worship you today we magnify your name oh god today and we give you all the praise and the glory be glorified in your body today be glorified be glorified father in jesus name we say thank you father Welcome to the platform, Paul O'Higgins. He's got a wonderful message for each and every one of us today. And it's restoration, transformation, and manifestation. So open your hearts and let the Holy Ghost in that he's going to transform your lives today in Jesus' name. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all here. And thanks for the wonderful, sincere worship of the Lord. We celebrate his goodness, even in seasons of adversities. And I must say, I'm very sad about Jackie. She came to Israel with us, and we got to know her well on that trip. And such a lovely, bubbly person. And just the Lord took her home too early for us. But all things work together for good. And we just pray wonderful comfort on her family. And there's lots, even though we know the Word of God, we love the Word of God, and we have many answers in the Word of God. We don't know everything. And there are many things that we can't just uh, ask the Lord a question, why? But we do know all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. We thank you, Father, for the legacy of Jackie. We thank you for lending her to us. We thank you for all the love she showed to every single one of us. And we thank you, Lord, for taking her safely home. We just praise you for her. We ask great comfort on her family, on her parents, Lord. And we ask you to keep on strengthening this section of your body, All Nations Church, and give us the power to go on with greater joy and greater faith and greater hope and greater wisdom in the days ahead. Now, Father, this afternoon, release a word of comfort, a strengthening word. A word of revelation, a life-giving word, and an imparting word. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for being here, and we also welcome those who are watching online. And before I get into the message, uh, I do want to point out, we have our book table at entrance two. It looks like if you want to go to entrance two, you have to go around <laughs> outside and in there. But we have many books there, but including this book, Good News for Ireland Today. Uh, this is an edition of the NIV Bible, and it's for free distribution for evangelists. We have an 18 or 20 page introduction showing how the Bible is the heritage of the Irish people. It's sad that in Ireland today there's a certain prejudice against the Bible. And this is really the, what made Ireland different than any other nation, was we Irish people had a love of the Word of God. And tragically, we've lost that a little bit over the last couple of centuries, but it's coming back. And this is a word of life. It's a word of hope. It's a word of love. It's God's message to mankind. Of course, it points to Jesus, and Jesus is the great life giver. Also, we have this tract here, Father God Loves You. You know, we need to really be sharing the, scripture, the Bible, so they're also for free. So now, Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on us. I want to begin by praying for the city of Dublin. Are you on? We want God's kingdom to come into this city like we've never seen it in the history of Dublin. Father, through the blood of Jesus, we ask you to release upon the city of Dublin, the inner cities of Dublin, the different uh, suburbs of Dublin, the different sections of Dublin, the different social types of people in Dublin, the different minorities in Dublin, a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and that you will draw the people of Dublin to yourself. Father, you say, though our sins be as scarlet, they become as white as wool. We thank you that the testimony of your blood is greater than the testimony of our iniquity. So, Lord, pour out a release of your Spirit 
and, and, and send forth your word and your workers into Ireland here at this time in Jesus' name. And anoint us in this room to be your loving, joy-filled workers at this time. Amen. Now this morning, Nula and I, we want to share uh, a message about uh, becoming full and complete disciples of the Lord. How many disciples of the Lord are in, are in the house today? A disciple is a follower of Jesus. He's thrown his or her lot in with him, and they've decided to go the Jesus way, the, Jesus, the way that Jesus modeled, the, J, the way that Jesus opened up for us, and to be empowered by his spirit to do this. In, in calling people to be a disciple, we're calling people to a level of faith and obedience, which is more than merely appropriating the scriptures, but is entering into a life of absolute surrender to him. And in, in the call of a disciple, there's three great aspects we want to emphasize today. And that is a disciple is one who's absolutely grounded on the reality that we are restored to the high favor and blessing of God through the wonderful work of Jesus on the cross, the new and the living way through the blood of Jesus. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins. We are made fully accepted and in, in, the, in the beloved Jesus. That's the message of Ephesians. That's the message of Colossians. That's the message of Romans. It was given to Paul to explain what Jesus accomplished on the cross and by his death, resurrection, and ascension. It was given to the gospel writers to show the history of Jesus. It was given to Paul especially to explain what was accomplished by his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. And the message of the gospel, and we're told in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6, that in the time of the end of the age, we're, we're in the end of the age, we all know that. By the way, we appreciate the stand of All Nations Church and the understanding of All Nations Church for the Word of God and for the place of Israel in the plan and purpose of God. We are grafted into their plans and purpose. So thank you for seeing that revelation. Thank you for standing for that truth. And thank you for uh, holding on to it in the face of opposition. Because we live in a world that's quite anti-Semitic. Here, Ireland is known today for its anti-Semitism. That's going to change as the truth of the Word of God gets released in the land. But that's the word of God. We are not just following myths. We're not following a made-up invention or a gospel that's tailored to the way we see it. We're not following opinions. We're following the truth of the word of God. A disciple is, first of all, someone absolutely grounded in the truth that he, he or she is fully restored to the high favor, blessing, and care of God, not on the basis of religious performance, not on the basis of moral performance, but on the basis of what, what God did in Jesus on the cross, that he transferred all our guilt unto him. And upon believing in that, he transfers all his righteousness unto us. That's amazing. Turn to a one near you and point at them and say, I'm amazed that God could save a wretch like you. It's amazing. We who once were no people were now God's people, we who, are de who were dead in our trespasses and sins, he made us alive when we were dead. He restored us, not on the basis of our performance, not on the basis of our religiosity, but on the basis of this amazing gift. By grace you are saved through faith, not of works as any man should boast. It is the gift of God. It's not something we earned by religion, our moral performance is a standing with God that God gave to the least and the lowest. And that's what the gospel message is, that God has already transferred unto Jesus the sin, the blame, the disgrace, the condemnation, the separation that the sins of all of us deserved. Jesus took it so that everyone, anyone or everyone from any nation under heaven can be restored to high favor with God on the basis of faith in the blood of Jesus. That's amazing, isn't it? And it's a message for all nations. <laughs> you have a great name. Your church is a great, great name. You're living up to the name. 
It's wonderful to see people from so many nations here today. But it's a message to all the nations. He didn't say, join a certain religion. He said, put your faith in this great historical work of redemption and be restored to the grace and care and favor of God, your he heavenly Father. He's not just a... That's that one. become sin for us, that we might become in him the righteousness of God. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, reconciling the world, every nation, not counting their trespasses against them. I think so much religion goes around counting their trespasses against them. But our gospel is the opposite. God is not counting your past sins against you. Most people who are away and estranged from God think they're too bad for him. But we have a message for them. God is not counting your past sins against you. You can be reconciled to God. He made him who knew sin become sin that we might become the righteousness of God. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ with this message, be reconciled to God. God is not counting their trespasses against us. I think we Christians are often quite priggish. Use a favorite word of Oswald Chambers. We're often quite priggish. We have a message of good cheer to all nations. However, this work of God for all of us in Jesus does us no good unless we hear about it. And we can't put our faith in it unless we hear about it. It does us no good unless we put our faith in it. And so the message is going out to this nation and all nations. Be reconciled to God because God imputed your sins to Jesus and just come back home to him. Like all the prodigal us is the prodigal son returning to he Heavenly Father. Not on the basis of our accomplishment. We're receiving the gift of God. We're receiving this establishment with God as a gift. Now every disciple of Jesus will have to be absolutely saturated in this. He made us to be accepted to him. As you know, that word in Ephesians is not just accepted, which means like barely in, but fully accepted, it says in some translations, or highly favored. It's the same word that's used when the, Abraham, when the, the angel spoke to Mary. Rejoice, O oh, highly favored. He's made us who were estranged. He's made us to be highly favored and fully restored to the favor and mercies and blessings of God. We therefore are to spend the rest of our life swimming in the goodness and the mercies of God. That's the new home that Jesus has prepared for us. I go to prepare a place for us. And then he goes on to say in John 15, many, many times, make your home, abide in my love. That's your new home. It's a place we didn't deserve. It's a place that won for us, but we're accepting it with all our hearts. One thing is missing, miss, missing, even after Paul explains this. He's praying that the believers who are already established in the grace of God will lay hold of this more, more fully, will have a greater revelation of this. The Holy Spirit will reveal to each one of us the height, the depth, the length and breadth of this amazing position in which we are adopted into. He translated us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into this kingdom of light. Welcome to your new home. That's your new home. That's the grace of God. That's where we live.
And in there, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing, everything we need to carry on our destiny and our purpose in life. Our heavenly father will be there taking care of us, working along with his son, our good shepherd. That's, oh, it's so sad to see people estranged from God, feeling that they're too bad for God. Haven't done enough to be restored to him. Of course they haven't, but he's done enough to bring them back to himself. Let this mes- message ring loud and clear in this in this time and in this generation to this land. Be reconciled to God, for He made Him who knew no sin to become sin for us. But the, being a disciple, there's even more. And uh, we have we sometimes we meet Christians and they say, look. Jesus paid for my sins. I don't have to do another thing. And I'm never going to do another thing. I'll just live any way I want to. Because to require of me anything more more than that would bring me back to works. And we have these friends and they are... um, We have these friends and they belong to a tradition like that. And they said to me, Paul, you believe that we should live by the teachings of Jesus. And these Christians said to me, we don't believe you have to live by the teachings of Jesus. Why? Because we're already saved by grace, it's not of works, it's a gift. We don't have to do another thing, and if you ask people to do another thing, you're bringing them back to works. Well, I said, being very, very diplomatic, I said, that's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. Because Jesus said, who hears these words of mine and does them is like a wise man who builds his house upon a rock. Sure, we're restored, accepted, forgiven, fully accepted, restored to his presence, not on the basis of any performance of our own, but that now something further would happen. You see, the Lord who restored us through his blood, he transforms us with his life. Paul says, much more now, having been saved, justified by faith, much more now will, will we be saved by his life. We are restored by his blood. We are transformed by his life. So we see on the day of the resurrection when Jesus showed that he'd overcome the grave and paid for the sin of the world, he showed them the nail prints, the testimony of the blood. He also breathed on them and they received another spirit. You see, the Lord has come not just to forgive us our sin, but to release us completely from the power and strength of the Adam nature, which we inherited from grandfather Adam. The self-centered, sinful nature that we inherited through our generations. And I inherited one of those natures, didn't you? So Jesus came to extract In the words of Ezekiel, he came to take out the heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh and put his spirit within us. He came to extract or disconnect us from the Adamic life and to connect us to the Jesus life. The first man was from the earth. Yes, Lord, thank you. The first man was from the earth, earthy. That's the Adam man. The second man is from the heavens, heavenly. As we have borne the, and this is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, as we have borne the image of the man of earth, the Adam life, let us now bear the image of the heavenly man. And so the teachings of Jesus are for those who already have received the heavenly life. They're not for Adam people, that's true. But for people who are no longer in Adam and have received the life of his spirit. And now this is how the life of the spirit of God functions in us. We turn the other cheek. We go the extra mile. We love our enemies. We don't fight with our enemies. We love everyone. We love people from the right. We love people from the left. We love people who are confused. We love people who are not confused. We love everyone. Someone said to me, if you're a Christian, you must be a right-wing person. I said, really? That doesn't apply to me. I said, I'm from another realm completely, that in the realm from right and left. Aren't you tired of all that right and left stuff? And the fighting, the argument, the strife. We've come through a sickening time of political strife. This nation 
has come through centuries of sickening political strife. Among Christians, with different labels, different denominations, different tags. Do you think we can afford another generation to live in strife? That we didn't learn so from Christ. We learn it from the flesh. We learn people who tried to divide us and cut us off one against the other. So I said to this person, said, you must be from the right. You're a right winger. I said, you got that one wrong. I said, I'm from a completely different realm that you have yet to experience. It's the realm of the love of God for every human being under heaven. We are not from the right. We are not from the left. We're from the kingdom of God, another realm entirely, and we love everyone. You cannot, you cannot box us into your labels. You cannot box us into your labels of left and right. We stand for righteousness. We stand for fairness. We stand for goodness. We stand for everything that's true, beautiful, and honorable. That's what we aspire to. We haven't fully attained it, but that's what we aspire to. This realm where people are no longer divided by ethnicity, no longer divided by tags, but where we have a new body of people moving in the spirit of Jesus, able to love the least, the lowest, the lost, the estranged, able to love people while they're still in their sins and to show them hope compassion, and goodwill. We're from a new realm altogether. This is the kingdom of God. In the last days, this gospel of the kingdom will be pe preached as a witness to every nation. And the end, the end will come. The Lord will come back in glory, bringing his saints with him, including Jackie, the beautiful Jackie. And, and actually, I know, I have it from the Lord, that I'll be at the Mount of Olives when he returns. But I don't know for sure whether I'll be coming from this side or that side. It doesn't really matter that much. <laughs> we have a destiny. We have a hope. We have a future. We have a gospel of tremendous hope. People in this time are in, in Ireland are floundering for, me for meaning, for purpose, for hope. Hope means a direction, a vision for life. What is the vision of life you get from the entertainment world? What's the vision of life you get from the news? That life has no real meaning. You make your own meaning. You make it up. But God made us for a purpose. He destined us in love to be his sons and daughters. He destined us to spend eternity with him. He destined us for adoption as sons. He destined us for eternity. He destined us for love. He destined us to be like him. When I grow up, and I'm quite short, when I grow up, I'm going to be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We have a destiny that lasts for eternities. This life on earth is a short span, but we have a destiny that reaches forever. And those who are lost in addiction, lost in despair, lost in cynicism, lost in atheism, lost in agnosticism, he loves them too because he has that destiny for them. And we call people home to destiny. The uh, philosophers say that the world is propelled by great ideas. A philosopher called Hegel, writing in the 19th century, said the world is propelled by great ideas. He had a follower called Karl Marx. He said, the world is created, propelled by class struggle. The oppressed rise against the oppressor. Then the oppressed, the, the oppressed becomes the oppressor in turn, and then the cycle goes on forever. But we know that history is propelled by something greater, by a hidden hand of God, by the plan and purposes of God. Winston Churchill said, you would have to be dead in soul completely, not to recognize that through the hand of history, that it, through the process of history, the hidden hand of someone greater than us all is at work. Yeah. History has a destiny. Your life has a destiny. And your life, is, uh, your life and my life are, has a destiny much more than just being mere consumers. He called me out of the, miry, out of the horrible pit, uh, out of the miry clay, to be joined with Jesus, to become his disciple, to go into the world as he is in the world, to radiate his love, joy, hope, healing, salvation, and good cheer to as many as people as I ever meet. He took us out of that yin and yang of strife into a new realm completely. 
So our gospel is a gospel of total acceptance through the blood. But also, it's a gospel of total transformation through his life. And that now we have received a new governing principle for our lives. The spirit and life of Jesus himself. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. In Romans, Paul speaks graphically about the death of Jesus for us. But in Galatians, he speaks that not only did Jesus die for us, we died with him. Romans 6 says, when he died, we died. Not only did he die for us, but we, with our connection to the Adamic nature, we died. So that we, I have been crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I have been crucified, nevertheless I live. How can that be? To be crucified is to be killed. If you've been killed, how can you live? I have been killed with Christ, nevertheless I live. Me as an independently operating human being no longer exists. The Latin word for I is ego. I have been crucified. The ego me with an independent agenda, with an independent life, with an independent ambition, no longer exists. I have been crucified with Christ. Now that's a good thing. <laughs> Nevertheless, I live. Because remember, the purpose of Jesus is to give us more abundant life. A life that's far more abundant than the Adamic life, which is under the law of sin and death. He gives us the heavenly life. You see, we, we human beings were never meant to live in isolation. We learned that over COVID in a very painful way. We're never meant to live in isolation, either from one another or from the grace and life of God. We were made to be connected. Just like my finger is worthless when disconnected from my hand and is worth a whole lot when attached to my hand, we, as independent agents, no longer exist. But now we live, but no longer we who live, but Christ who lives on us. We're attached to the life and nature of God. That's why Peter says, we have become partakers of the divine nature. And that's why Jesus was able to say, after he had breathed his spirit into his disciples, and after he had cut them loose of that Adamic nature and attached them to the heavenly life, he was able to say, now, as the, just as the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. People of mission, people of love, People coming from the throne. People coming not from the realm of human strife and opinions and squabbles. People coming from the heart and the life and the throne of heaven. That's who you are. It's a message of total restoration through his blood. Live there. Enjoy it. Spend the rest of your days there. Soak up his blessings. Soak up his life. But it's also a message of total transformation through his life. There's a third dimension that we want to speak about. And that is the life of Jesus in us is to come into manifestation. We beheld his glory, John writes, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Had Jesus come to Bethlehem, grown up in Nazareth, lived out his life in Nazareth and ascended into heaven and lived a secret private life, he still would have been the son of God. But we would not have beheld his glory. The greatest need, one of the greatest needs in Ireland and around the world today is for the followers of Jesus to manifest Jesus. And that's why Jesus said, in Luke 9, 23, and right throughout this, the Gospels, right throughout the teachings of Jesus, at least five times in one way or another, if anyone wants to be his disciple, 
let be my disciple. Let him take up his cross and follow me. For he who lo loves his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. For what does a profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Now this is the, not everyone who believes in the Lord. Not everyone who puts faith in the blood of Jesus. Not everyone who receives him as their savior and life giver. Not everyone goes on to be a disciple. That's why Paul says in Romans 12, if you really want to serve the Lord, present your body as a living sacrifice. Don't be conformed to the world and its agenda for you. It's not about ego fulfillment and selfish ambition anymore. But it's, a disciple is governed by the life principle of Jesus. Whereas the non-disciple would say, Lord, I want you to help me to fulfill my plans for me. The disciple says, Lord, I lay all my plans down before you. Behold, I come to do your will. Not my will, but thine be done. The disciple says, Lord, I want to do your will. But don't think that this is a sentence to a life of misery in any way. No, no. This is, a, this is from the one who said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. These things I've spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. <laughs> it's not a sentence. It's a secret to the greater joy, greatest joy of all is to surrender your all to him and say, Lord, I want to be governed by your ways. Not my ways, but your ways. Not my will, but your will. I want to be a disciple. I want to hear your teachings and by the help of the Holy Spirit, and only by the help of the Holy Spirit, I want to put your teachings into practice. I want people to see the life of Jesus manifest in us. See, this is what the way they'll know that we are his disciples if we have love one for another and if we've love also for the unlovely, those who disagree with us, those who per persecute us, those who oppose us, in the past, we labeled and put up fences against those who oppose us. We call them the bad people. And we are so, we in Ireland have inherited, and this is the one, one of the major reasons why people are turned off Christianity in Ireland. They see the hypocrisy of us all. That we who studied, so many who studied the teachings of Jesus end up as prisoners of strife and enmity and hatred and justifying even war and factionalism and some places are kind of apartheid one against the other. This is the history of Christianity in Europe. Something amazing is happening in Europe at this time. We know that in terms of statistics, Europe seems to be the least reached continent in the world. But I have hope for Europe. Because the Bible says he makes the dead come alive, right? For 1,700 years, from the days of Constantine until today, Christianity in Europe was patronized and supported by the governments. By the Holy Roman Empire, it was the established religion. You more or less had to be a Christian. After the Reformation, Christianity broke into different forms. And each still, in those nations, in Germany, it was a Lutheran form, in Portugal, a Catholic form, and so on, in England, an Anglican form. And the other, anything that wasn't that was persecuted. But Christianity, in these different forms, was supported and backed up by government. But in the last hundred years, and in Ireland in a shorter time, in a, just in one generation, we've seen the end of political support for Christianity. And we've been addicted to that support for 1,700 years. And now we're entering into a new world, similar to the world of Christi Christianity before the days of Constantine, where not only are we not supported and patronized by government, we're actually opposed by government. Not only do they not support Christianity, they don't support the moral teachings of Christianity. 
and we have a new morality without basis, any reference to the Ten Commandments of the teachings of Jesus. Now that has happened. And now we Christians are a people against the flow of the culture. And we have to prepare for suffering, persecution. We are in a condition, entering in a condition more similar to the situation of Christi Christians in China. They've got flat screen TVs over there. They've got their iP or iPhones and iPads. They've got heated homes and apartments there. But the government, very hostile to Christianity. And we, our views, are against the tide. So too is this way of Jesus for the called out ones. He who hears these words of mine and does them. Come to the Father through me. Be reconciled to God. Be filled with the life of the Spirit and follow his ways. And so we're in a new era where Christianity no longer supported by the government or the, by the political order, but almost opposed. And we have to learn to be disciples. And the message of the gospel will be carried by a new generation of disciples who will love not their lives even unto death and follow the Lamb wherever they go. But Jesus said, he who loses his life who lets go of his own plans and embraces his God's plans will find it. You'll find a greater joy, a greater love, a greater purpose, a greater fruitfulness, a deeper fellowship, a deeper fulfillment than the world could possibly offer you. And this is why he's called you to be disciples. And in this way, his life is manifested in us. We see also this in the teachings of Paul, where he shows that the old man is put off. His nail has been crucified with Christ. But then he says, put off your old ways of living. Even though the life principle which produced that sinful action has been cut off, the habit patterns, the worldliness, the self-centeredness still lives in me, in some of my training, some of my thinking, some of my fleshy selfishness, and I want nothing, I want to put it off. I want to say, calm me in, Lord. Keep changing me, not by religious activity, but by your spirit. You see, it's by, if by the spirit, not by religious self-effort or religiosity, you put to death the deeds of the flesh you will live, but by drawing on his life. Lord, I need more of your love. I, saw the, I see the limits of my love. I see you, impatience in myself. I see covetousness in myself or envy in myself. I don't want it, Lord. I need more of your life to overcome all this. So we, I see in all nations church before me right now a body of many disciples that the Lord is going to um, equip you to function against the tide of the world and its values, of its aims and its goals and its ambitions, of the projection of culture and family and your Available to the Lord. Whatever you work at, be good at it. Study hard. I'm not saying abandon your work. But whatever you do, do it unto the Lord. And let him direct your path. One of the marks of a disciple is this. He's constantly seeking guidance. Because he's governed by the principle, not my will, but thine be done. He's not leaning on his own opinions. See, the Christian Christianity isn't a set of opinions. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your paths. So he's governed by this, by the principle and direction of the spirit of God. O oh Lord, that I may be directed by your spirit. For as many as are read by the spirit are sons of God. Lord, that I may be directed by your spirit and that I may know your will. Lord, show me, not my will, but thine be done. Show me where to go, what to do, what to say, what to be involved in, what no longer to be involved in. Show me how I can be a blessing in my generation. Behold, I come to do your will. I'm restored by the blood. I'm transformed by his life. And I'm surrendered by obedience as his spirit leads me on. Nula, would you share here? Uh, well, you know, a woman is more practical than a man sometimes. 
And that's a wonderful message we've heard about restoration, transformation, and manifestation. Now, if something is to be manifested, if something is to be seen, something else has to be got out of the way. And the me, the Paul has explained that to you very well there, that how I have to get out of the way. And actually, because the Lord has showed us clearly that this, there's, this is an element to allow the Lord to manifest, to give, give up all our how-tos, how to do it. You know, we get all these even how to evangelize, and how to pray, and how to everything else. And somehow else, in the process of all our how-tos and all our head knowledge, the Lord doesn't have his way. Some of it may be of the Lord, but the, maybe the Lord will tell me, do one thing one way, and you do another, something else, the same thing to do it the same way. And as long as it's not contrary to the word of God, that can happen. So very, very often, because the Lord makes us, you know, we, we learn from the Lord. We learn through walking with the Lord. As we, we have to teach what we preach and, t and walk, we have to uh, walk out, rather. We have to walk out what we uh, teach. He'll say to, to me, that wasn't me. Get out of the way. You see? And so we have to continually get out of the way. But I also found that a lot of people think that uh, they, you can't say why to God or how to God. But one wonderful thing, as I allow him to manifest in me, I learned something from, from Mary also, where she said, you're highly favored. The angel said to her, you're highly favored. But then she didn't say, and Gate asked her, she was to be the mother of God. She didn't say, that's wonderful, what an honor, and see the angel. But first of all, she wondered why, and she asked him how. Sometimes you think, well, I shouldn't question God, and I shouldn't ask him why or how. But Mary did. How can this be? And she got a super answer. And it's for us, too, to allow him to manifest. It has helped me greatly. The angel said to Mary, and he's saying to us, because Paul pointed out that you too are highly favored. When we're restored to God, we're highly favored, just as Mary was, highly favored, for a different task. And we too can say, how can this be? And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And as you in this church, like many people, many were for the last two years, we couldn't get into, come back to Ireland, we could, couldn't get out of America or get into Ireland. And lots of things have happened in your lives and our lives. And we too sometimes say, how can this be? We don't know how to deal with stuff. And the Lord says to me, as he said to Mary, the Holy Spirit Fear not, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So when you have to deal with anything that's difficult and you've all had things to deal with that are difficult, in order for the Lord to manifest what he wants to do in these difficult situations, what do we say, like Mary, because we too are holy, Highly favored, Jesus died for me and for you and rose again. And we rise again. We have risen again. And we're stopped trying to get any victory because we have his victory. And he says, fear not, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and me and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Let him out. Let Jesus be seen. Let him manifest no matter what it costs us. We will not take on the arguments of the world religious or otherwise, even arguments about COVID. Jesus says to me very often, when there's arguments going on, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Thank you, Lord. Now I'm just going to take, seal some of this with a prayer. First of all, how many would say to the Lord, count me in. I'm your disciple. Let's just stand up and we'll ask the Lord to seal it for every one of us. And 
we'll just make, we'll also pray for everyone in this room to be absolutely sure that you're restored to God, that you're in right standing with God. We all failed morally, and none of us get into right standing through our moral performance. We all failed. We want to have good moral performance, but God laid on Jesus the sin of us all. So let's just put our faith in that, just to be fully accepted, not a quiver of doubt. We want to say this. Heavenly Father, we thank you for laying on Jesus all of our sin, all of our blame, and all of our condemnation. It's a historic fact. And I'm coming home to you right now to dwell in your favor forever on the basis that you did enough for me in Jesus. I put my faith in this fact and I receive your mercy, your restoration. I lay down this Adam part of my nature, the sinful, selfish side of my nature, which got me into trouble. And I ask you, Jesus, to live in my heart as my only engine for living. Fill me with your Spirit. And Holy Spirit, fill me with the rivers of my Heavenly Father's love. I'm a new creation. My life is yours, Lord. And how, uh, let's just pause here now. And no music, please. And how many will just say, Lord, behold, I come to do your will. Behold, we come, Lord, to do your will. Show each one of us in this room where they are to go, their assignment, their mission, how we can be an expression of your love, your kindness, how we can be servants, the teams that we should belong to, and how we can be your disciples, how we can go about everywhere doing good. Lord, we receive the anointing of the Spirit of God, afresh and anew, to go about everywhere doing good, and to love people, no matter what mess they're in. And also an anointing to share the gospel of truth with them and to heal those who are oppressed of the devil. In Jesus' name, the Spirit of the living God, fall on every single one of us here in a new way and release a whole series of divine appointments for every single one of us in Jesus' name. As you cause us to enter your plans, your purposes, and your high and new destiny for every single one of us in Jesus' name. I loose everyone here from the destiny of the world for their lives, and I bind all of us to the destiny of God for our lives in Jesus' name. Now, hand, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Spirit of God, fall. Thank you, Lord. Now, hands up here, those who are suffering from any affliction in your body, and we just pray a general prayer for that. There may be people here with a cancer diagnosis, with a COVID diagnosis, with a lung problem, with back problems, with kidney problems, or with other ailments. Father, we receive, on the basis of what Jesus has done, we continue to receive every spiritual blessing, we're receiving now the every spiritual blessing that you've won for us, including the full impartation of your spirit. And now, Lord, specifically the blessing of healing, that you will keep us, Lord, by your keeping power, because we are frail and fragile human beings. We ask you to keep us in sturdy health. Let your healing power flow into every organ of each body. Let the immune system of every one of us be strengthened, Lord. Let us be protected from evil. Let us be strengthened in our lungs. Lord, we receive a strengthening into our lungs, a comfort of, into every back that may be suffering pain, healing into the backs, healing into the kidneys, Lord, healing into the ears and the eyes, healing into every afflicted part of our bodies. We receive what Jesus has won for us and will continue to receive until we are completely restored. Father, bring restoration into every heart. 
Now, Lord, where there is also a broken heart, where people have been let down by family and by relations that have collapsed, where we've been hurt, we've been hurt and wounded by other people and the things they said and did to us. Forgive us our part in these things. But I ask you now, Father, to pour in your fatherly love to heal every heart that has been broken by rejection, by abandonment, by sorrow and psychological pain. Holy Spirit, come into the deep recesses of every soul and heart right now in Jesus' name and give us the energy to face the future with joy and hope. And thank you for the new day you're releasing in Ireland, Lord. The post-Constantine day when the believers will be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Lord, release a new strengthening on all nations' church and a whole river of divine appointments for each of us. And may every one of us have a fantastic week with wonderful divine appointments and surprises from heaven. In Jesus' name, amen.